Let's see, can I, how do I share my screen? I know there's a share screen, that's what I want to do. And so now we want to find the PowerPoint presentation, which is right here. So, I'm going to share on the screen and see how we can do this. Well, it looks like it's right there. I'm going to make sure it's where it's supposed to be. That's what we want to share right there. All righty. All right, so I'm Dr. Lockett. Sorry it took me so long to get this thing working. But this is chapter one out of your technology book, which is module three. And um, it discusses the introduction to computers. All right. OK, so as you can see, computers are everywhere. These are the topics, the basic terms in computing and the categories of computers. This book aims to increase your digital, digital literacy. As you know, it's just an understanding about computers. Many of you probably know more about computers than I do because you were born with it. Okay, so as we said before, computers are everywhere. They're used for communications, business, schoolwork, entertainment, creativity, finances, procedures, research, training, and medical records. Large companies today use computers in a variety of ways, such as design, shipping. I could not imagine FedEx or Amazon shipping anything without the use of computers. Process control administration, marketing. Also, technology plays a crucial part in the military, security, taxes, and the police. So you look at right here, this guy, um, he's sitting in his police cruiser and he's probably accessing your information based on your tag or what have you. So here it is. A computer is just a device that accepts input, process the data, and it can output or store the results of the action. The four types of actions that a computer can do, it can input, it can, in other words, it, it can receive what you tell it to do, it can process it, it can output, and it can store it. Okay? All right, so if you can touch a device on your computer, it's better known as hardware. A computer program, which is software, is what we're using to record this lesson or this lecture. In fact, I'm using I'm using um, YouTube to record this lecture. But that's an app. Anything that you access, Word, access, PowerPoint, Excel, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of those things are software. Okay, data, it just consists of individual facts or pieces of information. It's just raw, okay? Now, uh, computers need the network to communicate with each other. Usually, either you're gonna have a wire better known as Cat5 cable connected to your computer, or you're going to be on Wi-Fi. And that mode of communication is better known as the network. Also, a great deal of information we do today is on the internet. Many individuals use the internet to access web pages, better known as the World Wide Web. A popular use of the internet is email. Also, cloud computing. Cloud computing is nothing more than you saving information away from your location. It's on a server somewhere other than on your desk or at your computer. It's in the cloud, as they say. I'm certainly sure that we don't need to talk about social media because all you guys have Twitter or you probably have X or you probably have Facebook, YouTube, all those other, um, in fact, some of y'all probably still have MySpace, 
Okay, that was a joke. It's 2024. But anyway, those are social media platforms. Personal computer, like the one I'm on right now, I'm on a PC, but they call all um, non-Mac computers PC. That's just a generic name, but a PC is generally meant to use be used by one person at a time. Okay. I'm on, a, I'm on a desktop computer as we speak now. Um, you have the all-in-one computers and you have the laptop computers. You have ultra portable computers, which are thin, lightweight laptops. And then you have convertibles, laptops, the two-in-ones, a lightweight laptop that allows the user to swivel or detach the monitor. And then you have Chromebook. Uh, during COVID, all of us um, were using Chromebooks for the most part because when the school needed to um, give students, not just this school, but the schools in Cumberland County, they needed to give students a way to access the internet. They gave them Chromebook because they're lightweight and very inexpensive. Doesn't have a whole lot of um, firepower. You're not going to be on there playing a whole lot of games, but it'll get you to the internet. And you can also type papers and use um, Google Docs and do Google Spreadsheets and to do many of the tasks that are required by students. Multi-user computers, they're used by large, large organizations to manage a variety of services. You have a network server, you have a mainframe computer, and you have a supercomputer. Where would I might, where might I find a supercomputer? Well, I will say down at the probably where you pay your taxes, the IRS, probably NASA is going to have a supercomputer. In fact, if you go to Vegas and um, if you go to Vegas and um, look at the lights, they're probably controlled by a supercomputer. Embedded systems and the Internet of Things. That's what that little term right there means. You can see that right there, Internet of Things. Okay, embedded computer is a computer basically inside of a computer. How do you use embedded computers? Well, um, what comes to my mind is if you're driving a car and your tire pressure light comes on, that is an embedded computer inside of your tire sending the message to you, the main computer in your car, telling it that the, the light, the, the um, tire pressure is down and to turn on the low pressure light. Also in a printer, you might have an embedded computer to tell the larger computer that it's out of paper. And the Internet of Things, that just means that everything we do is on the Internet. You got a refrigerator that tells you it's time to buy milk. You got a thermostat that you can control on the Internet from your watch or from your, your you got a, you have, you have a, a camera on your house. Um, the rain, rain cameras on your house, you can see who's coming over. And so that's just everything is basically connected to the Internet, the Internet of Things. Some more examples of the Internet of Things are ebook readers, gaming consoles, smart TVs, home automation, smart speakers like Hey Siri or Alexis, and an autonomous car like the ones that. Um, you get in and they drive you, they drive for you. Okay, this next part of this presentation is we're gonna talk about mobile devices, hand-free computing, safety and courtesy computing in new ways, digital well-being and mobile cloud services. Everybody know a mobile device like the one I have on right here. That's a mobile device and I got my iPhone. That's a mobile device. Um, there you have it, a tablet, mobile device, why? Well, you can't walk around with a desktop in your pocket, can you? But you can walk around with a tablet, a smartphone, like I said, wearable technology like the one I have on right here. You can have a Fitbit, or you can have um, other parts of other types of electronic technology. You can have eyeglasses that offer augmented reality experience. You really think you're in there fighting somebody with these eyeglasses, it's so real. You just, oh man. And smartwatches work as a companion to your smartphone. 
hands-free computing, well, you know, when you're driving, they suggest that you do not hold the phone up to your ear, that you use, go through your Bluetooth. And um, some of the benefits are is convenience and safety, definitely safety. Um, normally, when you're doing hands-free driving, that device, that phone is connected to Bluetooth. Okay, it's short range. And also you have a virtual assistant like, hey Siri, that's a virtual assistant, or hey Alexis, or make me some popcorn. Okay, safe use of mobile devices, okay? In other words, you wanna make sure that your cell phone or your mobile device has a protective case. You wanna make sure that you guard your mobile devices against theft and loss. Make sure that the lock screen is on and be, be prepared to use remote wipe, which is a utility to erase all the data on your device if it's stolen. Wallet security. In other words, make sure that when you're sitting at Starbucks and you get on the internet, that it's the actual internet or Wi-Fi from Starbucks and not some guy sitting in the corner pretending to make you think it's Starbucks. And personal safety. In other words, um, Microsoft OS system offers a digital, a medical ID feature that gives first responders access to your allergies and your medical conditions directly from your lock screen. That's pretty good if you're a senior citizen. And new social changes, remember to place devices on silence. Man, what's worse than going into a movie? Somebody has the phone going off or sitting in class and the phone is going off. Consider waiting guests when using a coffee shop's table for an extended period of time, okay? Well, be careful when you send the messages, um, especially when you're angry. And understand that using mobile devices in the presence of others may be considered rude. You ever went on a date and your date sitting over there texting? Yeah. Okay, digital well-being which just means that these devices can be used to check your glucose, your heart, your sleep pattern, um, et cetera. All right, computing in many ways. Okay, LBS, location-based services. Did you know that if you call AAA, they use your phone to tell them exactly where you are? Uh, Real-time information refers to any information that is delivered to you immediately after it's created. Um, how many times have you seen somebody live streaming something and it's it's an accident? You know, you see it happen right there. Uh, Crowdsourcing, it's just a gathering of folks in a large, you know, in a place gathering information. That's crowdsourcing. Mobile payments, we all know about the mobile payments when you stick your, your phone on the tap, you tap it to the um, cash register or whatever, using NFC, near field communication. All righty. Social and sharing. You wouldn't have to talk about this, but we all know what an SMS is. That is, believe it or not, that's just send a text message. Various service and message services use the internet to send messages and share um, photos. You got WhatsApp, you got Apple iMessage, Skype, FaceTime, social networking. We really don't have to talk about that because everybody is on it. Well, most all of us have some type of device and we're socially connected with each other, sending um, threads or TikTok or Snapchat or Facebook. Uh, streaming media, that just means you're getting music or videos downloaded. That's what it means. Um, you can also get music from Pandora or Spotify. Streaming video is offered in, in, in a variety of ways, okay, like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. Uh, fitness, we're not to talk about fitness. Fitness is exactly what it is when you use your phone to keep track of your activities. You got the ring on your phone, the, the 
the uh, fitness ring. You also have um, apps that, that take care or monitor your heart rate. Uh, in fact, this morning I was out working, working out at, I guess it was probably 4.30. No, it was probably more like 5.30 I was out working. I had my phone, tracking my, my miles and everything. So you can use that. And the good thing about your phone, it, you can keep, you can see a record, your progress. You can monitor your progress. Let's talk about cloud services. Now, you think that cloud services is something that's working in the cloud. The cloud is just a name. But cloud services is just a platform, a format where you save your files, not at your or on your local computer. One source of cloud, one cloud service is um, Google Docs. Um, what's another one? Um, um, what's that one we use with um, with um, OneDrive? Yeah. So you got Google Docs, OneDrive. You got uh, Dropbox. There's many others. Cloud collaboration is when you save a document and you share it with somebody else and you allow them to go in and, and edit that document. Of course, you, the creator of the document, can choose to allow who edits or just let them view it, okay? And translation apps, such as Google Translate, can convert type or spoken words into almost any foreign language. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope we got a good understanding of this, this chapter, this chapter one, and uh, have a great semester. Now, when you um, do the lecture handout, you read the lecture handout. I wonder if I can pull that lecture handout up. I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. But if you pull up the lecture handout, um, well, let's see, can I pull it up? If I can, I can. If I can, I can. Um, let's see here. The lecture handout has, um, basically it has a um, an outline. Let me pull it up real quick. It has an outline in it. And at the end of this outline, it allows you to answer some questions that will help you complete the test, okay? So let's just see if I can pull that up real quick. The outline, we're in module three, so the, the outline is gonna be under the topic of, um, chapter one. So let's just go there. Let's just, it's gonna be under the, so you're gonna go to, it's going to be right there, Module 3, Chapter 1. So we're going to open that up and see what happens. So that opens up. And right here, that's your, um, okay, so you read, okay, when you finish reading this, okay, and I took the time to do this to help you guys out, okay, you're going to answer these questions right here. Blank services allows, okay, everybody know that is cloud, okay? But anyway, that's that's where you get those questions. That's where you get the answers for the questions. And then you you will you will go down to the bottom here and upload it and turn it in to help you, all right? All right. That's the end of this. Um, let's stop sharing here. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out to me. I am Dr. Lockett.